and welcome to today's edition of Frightfully Forgotten. But to start things off, what are we drinking today? Vienna of the Damned. Vienna style lager. Today we're going to be bringing to you a made-for-TV movie, Amityville 4, The Evil Escapes, uh, done in 1989. Directed by Sandor Stern, and he also did uh, another great movie called Pin, which we had covered in the past. It stars Patty Duke. She was in Valley of the Dolls. And the made-for-TV sequel to Rosemary's Baby called Look What Happened to Rosemary's Baby. Aaron Eisenberg is in this. Most of us would know him uh, from Deep Space Nine. He played Nog. Jane Wyatt is in this. She was in uh, Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home. This movie was edited by Skip Schoolnick, who directed Hide and Go Shriek. So the movie starts off right in the thick of it. Priest going to the Amityville house to do battle with the evil. Shit's already hit the fan. Furniture's flying at the priest. The stove is yeah. all in flames. <laughs> and there's this lamp there and he starts like... <laughs> yeah. I guess the evil of the house go down the cable of the lamp. <laughs> Then he gets like thrust back and gets knocked out. The house is being liquidated, a yard sale happening. Two older ladies are there looking around. She likes to play a joke on her sister by buying her real ugly stuff. She thinks his lamp would be a great joke. Kind of cuts her finger on her. A few days later when she goes to actually ship out this lamp, her <laughs> fingers have gotten all black and rotten. <laughs> We then get introduced to Alice, who is the sister. Her daughter, Nancy, is coming to move in with her with her kids. They arrive about the same time as this lamp does. <laughs> yeah. Plugs it in and you can see the evil <laughs> go down the cable. The youngest son comes down to make breakfast or opens a toaster oven. And the bird's all there and dead. Ah, <laughs> oh, mom. <laughs> Eric Roberts style. Yeah, yeah. The little girl, she's kind of still grief stricken that her dad died and she starts talking to the lamp and starts calling it daddy and everything. There's another scene where the son, he goes downstairs to get something. Here he sees this chainsaw like on the workbench. <laughs> yeah, look at his face. <laughs> yeah. It's almost like he's getting a blowjob for the first time. So, sort of playing with it and making the chainsaw noises. <laughs> And then it actually starts up <laughs> cutting through all these wooden beams and everything. Support beams. <laughs> it goes into all these potatoes and onions. And all like the, the mason jars with all the preservatives. <laughs> all these canned goods. Here the mother and the grandmother come down. The grandmother loses her footing and here she all falls onto the stairs and everything. <laughs> just like it is in the just, background. And see yeah, just total mayhem's going on in the basement. Finally the maid comes down and grabs this like iron bar, blocks the chainsaw and then it just conks out. Naturally the grandmother thinks that the kid started it up himself. Oh, well, of course you would think that. <laughs> yeah, you know? Exactly. Started it on its own, I swear. <laughs> like, yeah, sure, of course the mom believes him. Like, oh. he's telling the truth. Any other parent would be like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> yes. You fucking destroyed the whole basement. <laughs> the daughter is like stuffing food in the garburetor, and the garburetor kind of just stops working. Then she gets him to put his hand down and start trying to get the clog out, and right away the switch is near. <laughs> <laughs> so just like in uh, Amityville number one, the pipes are being clogged up with this black tar shit. <laughs> yeah, Kathy! Get a plumber along, big support beam kind of comes down mm. onto his chest, the pipe kind of breaks open and all that black tar shit starts pouring <laughs> on his face and the hand comes out. That's all intact. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not the full hand. <laughs> <laughs> From the wrist yeah. down. If the plumber's car is still there, they're going to assume that he's still in the house. I put the car into gear and drive away. <laughs> <laughs> it's all in like rush hour traffic. Everyone's looking over like, who's driving this thing? <laughs> the ghost is all driving. He's all, ah, oh, yeah, you fine. left at the wrong time. <laughs> yeah. The maid is upstairs and she kind of hears giggling behind the door. And the door slams behind her and the cord actually, it's all super long, this cord. <laughs> it wraps right around her neck and kills her. The priest has been trying to track down who bought this lamp, where it's gone to. 
Because he knows it's possessed. Yeah, he knows that he's carrying the evil. For Alice's sister, who bought the lamp and cut her fingers, now she's all laid up and like... <laughs> quarantine. Quarantine and everything and dying from this lamp. So he, he squeezes information from her that she sent it to her sister. He actually sends them a letter. It just so happens that like the letter blows away. It's urgent. I'll mail a letter. <laughs> And just wait. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. He also tries phoning. The phone starts to melt and everything. So finally he's had enough and he drives down to where they live. He tells her what he thinks is going on. She takes him back to the house. And that's where we're going to end it because he's going to get ready to do battle with the lamp. It's all scared. So she's all <laughs> moving backwards and everything. Why are we covering this movie? Well, it is a forgotten sequel and it's a part four sequel. It is just a lot of fun. It's yeah. a very entertaining movie. And for a made-for-TV movie, it's pretty damn good, actually. And it doesn't take itself too seriously, right? The effects are good. Yeah. Even watching, mm, how did they do that? You yeah. Know, when you think, how did they do that, that's usually the sign of a good effect, right? That's right, yeah. For a made-for-TV movie, too, there's actually a decent amount of gore and blood. It also rehashes a lot of the stuff from the original movie. Normally, never really turns out that well, but they use it in different ways too, yeah. right? So they kind of keep the ideas fresh. The music does a good job of building the tension where it needs to be built. The little daughter, when she starts to get possessed and acts all evil, she's pretty kind of shitty at it. <laughs> yeah. And the music is a band-aid over the shitty acting a little bit. Right, you right. Know? All the kids in this movie kind of don't act all that well, but yeah. the adults are good in this. Patty Duke is actually really She's, she's great. That kind of brings us to the ending of this movie too, which we're not gonna spoil it for you, but you do get a pretty good payoff in this movie. Pretty damn tense. And climactic, like it really builds to this big climax. When you sum it up that way, for a movie about a possessed lamp, it does a pretty it's good, pretty job. good. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure there's worse movies out there that have the same kind of idea. If you kind of gave up on the Amityville movies after part three, because part three was so stupid and bad, <laughs> monster coming out of the, the basement <laughs> and everything. <laughs> Stupid monster. <laughs> uh, this movie's kind of a nice kind of back to basics a little bit. Uh, give number four a, a try. It's actually a lot of fun. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and uh, try not to take it too seriously because yeah. it doesn't either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>